A lot of people think editing ought to be invisible, but we never felt that way. We always felt that editing should slap the audience in the face. Hey everybody, my name is Nick. I'm a director living in Taiwan. And recently I've been working on a few narrative short films. And I've really had to explore the question once again of what makes a good cut or what makes a good edit. Another way to ask this question is why cut here instead of here? And there really isn't an answer. That's the art of editing. There's lots of different ways to do one thing. But there are some general guidelines that you can follow, like maybe you've heard that you should always cut on action, or you should cut on a 45 degree angle or more, or you should cut to a shot with a different focal length. Um, those are technical guidelines that help mask a cut or make it smooth, and you know generally what's deemed technically correct. But I'm thinking in a more abstract way. So Walter Murch wrote this book called In the Blink of an Eye, and he created something called the Rule of Six. And he wrote down six things that you should consider when you're making a cut. And they go in this order. Emotion, story, rhythm, eye trace, three-dimensional space, and three-dimensional action. Now the less important elements in the list should be sacrificed to preserve the elements at the top of the list. So for example, you shouldn't make a cut preserving the audience's understanding of 3D space at the expense of emotion or story or even rhythm. And I always refer back to this list, I love it, because it does bring me a little closer to this understanding of what makes a good cut in this abstract way. Like, why not have a one-take scene? Why include multiple angles at all? Why bother with the cut? And oftentimes, the reason we do it is because it increases our understanding of everything on this list. We make the cut because it is the best tool to manipulate the emotions that the filmmaker wants us to feel, or it's the best tool to help us understand the story, or it's the best tool to give us the rhythm we want of the film. And the real reason I wanted to make this video was actually because I saw a single cut in the movie Casino. So as I was working on these shorts, I tended to go back and watch films that I love to kind of get inspiration and kind of study the editing in those films. And one of those movies I was watching was Casino. And the reason I was watching Casino is if you don't know, Scorsese's editor is probably the single most famous film editor of all time, Thelma Schoonmaker. She's by far, I would say, the most famous and revered editor in the history of film. Um, so studying how she cuts a scene is of course, you know, good practice. But as I was watching Casino, I saw this cut and I thought to myself, what? Why? This happens in the opening of a scene where our character Ace is waiting for his unstable wife Ginger to show up and he thinks she's going to do, you know, something terrible. So we get this long wide shot and then it cuts closer in. Why make a cut here? What is the point of this? It doesn't really reveal anything new. In fact, it's cutting in closer. So I suppose it's giving us a closer perspective on the characters. But, you know, it's not really showing us a different angle. It's breaking the 45 degree rule. Uh, it does cut on an action. It's a match cut, so that's kind of good. But it definitely still feels really jarring. Um, it's in the middle of nothing happening, uh, except for this hand movement here. And it doesn't really feel justified. Also, you can see this character's head is in a different spot, which adds to the dirtiness of the cut. So why would you make this cut here? Well, the first explanation is that Casino is a three-hour movie and you can't expect every cut to be exactly perfect. But this is Thelma Schoonmaker that we're talking about and I don't want to disparage her name on this channel. If she made a cut, she made it for a reason. So let's throw that idea out. The second thought is that sometimes you might make a suboptimal cut if it serves the story. And Thelma is quoted as saying that an editor shouldn't have an ego. So this tracks with her philosophy that if the cut serves the film better, having a cut that isn't as good or makes, doesn't make her look good is acceptable if it's the right thing to do for the movie. So this tracks back to the rule of six that we talked about, you know, these two shots could have been strung together, for example, if it served the emotion or the story or the rhythm. Uh, De Niro's reaction here is quite interesting in the second shot. So, you know, that could be a reason why they wanted to cut into it. Um, you know, this cut could also add a sense of impatience, which matches the emotion of the scene. 
<clears throat> or perhaps the cut before ended too early and Thelma wanted to extend the scene to, to add to this feeling of waiting. Uh, you know, maybe she thought that the rhythm wasn't right if the scene ended earlier without having this extra section tacked on. So as we start to really break this down, we kind of see that this cut could make more and more sense. And even though it seems out of place and a little bit jarring in the moment, uh, there are many reasons why you might want to make a cut here. The final thing to consider is that maybe Thelma Soonmaker just likes doing things a little unconventionally, um, you know, kind of as a statement. And so having this dirty cut is in and of itself the point of the cut. She's quoted as saying, a lot of people think editing ought to be invisible, but we never felt that way. We always felt that editing should slap the audience in the face. She mentions that, you know, documentary styles really affected her work and that she likes roughness. So this kind of cut does fit with her overall style, even if I don't particularly like it in this particular scene. In fact, this roughness is exactly what makes her such an influential and iconic editor. You know, we can see it in a scene like this. Or a scene like this. So in reality, even though this seemed to me like a bad cut in the moment that I watched it, and I was thinking, geez, how could the greatest editor of all time make a cut like this? You know, it does fit with her body of work. And there are lots of reasons why it could be a good cut. So finally, I'll leave you guys with a funny quote that I heard somebody, a comment that somebody left on the internet. And they said that most Scorsese fans don't really realize that they're actually Thelma Schoonmaker fans. And I think that's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek way of saying that editing is one of the most important parts of Scorsese's work, and a lot of that has to be attributed to Thelma. So I would urge everyone to look a little deeper at some of the cuts made in your favorite Scorsese films, like Goodfellas, Casino, uh, whatever your favorite is, and really kind of look very closely at the way that the film is edited and the way that the scenes that you like are edited, because very often they are the key to why these scenes and these movies work so well. And a lot of times they're done in a way that is pretty unconventional. All right, thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this, let me know in the comments and remember to share, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family. See you next time.